Hello, John Mandeville here from the Collab 365 coaching team. In this short video, what I'm going to show you is a technique to allow you to create Outlook events from a Power App. So selecting a date in a Power App for whatever purpose that you need to use it for, and then dealing with that particular date and some time information in Power Automate before handing that off to Outlook where you're going to create a calendar event. And the blog shows you briefly how to do it, but I'm going to take you through step by step. So let's assume you've created an app. I've got a really basic framework set up here. Uh, this could be for any business process. Maybe it's an app that you can book your holidays on. You can get approval for those holidays. And if you get approval, then what you want to do is you want to send an Outlook calendar invite. But I'm just going to send the basic data from this very simple Power App into Power Automate and then get it to create my calendar event for me. So you'll see here I've got three controls. I've got a date picker. Um, which I've just added to the canvas there. I've also got just a very, very simple drop down. And the reason I've got that is because in a moment, I'll show you how to come back and use that if you want to select some time information. But really simply, I've got a date there. If I press play, I can select any date in my calendar. Let's just click the 19th. And if I click create event, what I've got is um, on select create event. I'm going to run a Power Automate flow and the Power Automate flow is called Create a Calendar Event and you'll see it's uh, it's got the dot run argument at the end of it. Now you'll see these two pieces of information here, you may have one or more, but what I've done is I've created a Power Automate flow that expects two inputs. The first is a selected date and the second is just a person, so some uh, you know user information, an email. You don't always need that, but it's just handy to know that what I'm doing here is I'm passing in two parameters. And I created the Power Automate flow directly from this menu item here. You can add a flow, but you can see I've created one. Um, you can choose from various different templates, but you can also edit flows in the context of your Power App. So let's go and have a look what this flow does. So first of all, the flow receives two inputs. Uh, I initiated it with Power Apps V2, so that's a manual invocation of a Power Automate flow. Uh, just as a note, if you once you've created this for the first time, if you want to go back and edit the triggers, edit the actions that you create, you can access it through make.powerautomate.com and you'll see this flow in your list of flows that way. So a lot of flexibility, but you can create direct from Power Apps. So I've got a trigger date. It's just going to ex expect a date that will arrive here. It says a piece of date information and an email. Now, some important things to note. All the Power App is doing is storing a date. You'll see it there, year, year, month, month, day, day. It stores it in that format. What Outlook expects when you come down to the create event action is if I just get rid of this here, it expects something which looks like this. Now, what that is, it's called an ISO 8601 standard timestamp. It's a universally accepted format of a timestamp. So all we're really going to need to do is think about that problem and think about constructing information from our Power App in Power Automate and passing it to Outlook in the correct format. So let's just have a look at what we do. The first thing I've done is I've got to compose and you can combine steps. Um, you don't need all of these comp composes, but what I'm doing is I'm laying it out step by step so you can see it. So store the date from the Power App. That's your trigger date. I've done nothing else there than store that piece of information. OK, so what I'm now doing here is I am storing a start time just because I know Outlook requires an event to be created with a start time. I've manually put the correct format start time there. If you want to start to play with substituting data and you want to put some information into your flow, that's where this particular item comes in. You're going to want an hours, a minute and potentially a seconds, although you can hard code that or add it on at the end. So you can select it. So what you'll see here is I've got um, this will be, uh, let's say, hour number one on that date. And the way that I've created this drop down, if I just press alt now, You'll see it's got 12 options for me to choose from. I simply created a drop down in the items property of that drop down. Let's just show you that. I'm selecting this one here. We've got this uh, argument here, sequence 12. That sequence is a really handy function to get used to or handy formula to get used to. I've just said, create me a sequence of numbers from 1 to 12 and it's done it for me. I could put um, 1 to 24 if I'm using 24 hour clock. But then all you need to do is make sure that data is passed across to your flow and then you can start to use it. But for the sake of this demo, 
uh, we'll just go back to the flow. I have just hard coded it into the flow itself. So back where we were. So I've created a start time. I've created an end time. So I'm, I'm basically saying here, get a date and the date, the time I need is nine to five o'clock in the 24 hour clock. Note, I've also put the seconds in there. That's something important if you're constructing information to pass off to Outlook. And then I'm using a compose to start to construct the information. And you'll notice the use of concat. What that does is that compresses different strings into one string. Now, if we open this up, I will just show you the full expression. I've used concat and then using the dynamic content. Remember, when you do this, select inside the brackets, then select your dynamic content. I've used the outputs from the date and then I've put in the comma to denote something else is gonna need to be compressed or concatenated onto the end. And then this T, because the T denotes a time in that ISO format. And then again, I've said the next piece you're gonna concatenate is the start time. I've done the same with an end time. It's just a simple concat. Again, take, take the date, put a T in, store the end time that we passed in or we created. Then, because again, if we just have a look at this, um, let's just get rid of the outputs there. We've got um, dashes instead of slashes. If I just run this, what I'll show you, excuse me, I need to put that back in here. Start time will be my start time. Save that. When we run this flow, what we will see is that coming from Power Automate, so we have forward slashes in the data. So what I've then done is I've recognized that's a problem and I've replaced anything in the string where we've created the combined start and end times and actually replaced them. So I'll just quickly run you through this. Replace and then again, chosen the dynamic content here. Then after the first comma, it's what do you want to replace? And then the second one is replace it with what? Notice the use of the single quotes there. That's really important. So I've just done that to format the two dates, uh, the two dates and times in the correct format, the start and the end time. Then I can use this create event version four to create a brand new test event using those two dates. And again, just choose my time zone. And that's all I need to do. Now, what I will do is I will quickly pop across to make.powerautomate.com and I'll just demonstrate it running so you can see what I mean in the context of an actual flow. As I mentioned, this is created under my flows. It's create a calendar event. Let's just quickly edit it so you can see it in light of all the other stuff that I've got working on. Right, now I've been testing this a little while back, so I'm gonna use some recently used data. It's three days apparently. Let's save and test it and I'll show you what happens. So that ran successfully. So first of all, there's my trigger. I did change that trigger to be the Power Apps version two trigger to make sure that I'm getting the right invocation from my Power Apps. So store the date from the Power App. You'll see here the Power App has uh, 2023-09-15. That's fine. We have some time. We create the combined string here. Notice that T, that now looks like the ISO format that I'm after. Now, in reality, I don't need these steps because if you notice up here, um, when previously I was testing this, we had slashes here, but it's just a good, uh, a good example of the fact that you might need to manipulate the data and make sure it's correct. So these two steps are not actually needed. There's no forward slashes to get rid of, so it doesn't find any. And then finally, the calendar event gets created over here. And that's just popped into my calendar. Um, it's worked successfully and I can see it in my calendar. It pops up a few uh, seconds later, like 30 seconds to a minute. But it's not really that hard to create these processes. And, you know, you could have an approval step in the middle of this to only do this if somebody approves your leave. Then go and put the calendar step in. But I hope that's helpful. And, uh, yeah, enjoy. And do experiment with this. I'd love to hear how you use these kind of flows. Uh, come and see me in the Academy. Have a chat. Post your examples into the forum. And we'll see you really soon.